Cold, cold, cold. Yeah, All there right. you go. You might want to put it in the microwave and try and protect yourself. Make yeah. Sure you put the on the yeah, microwaves, they suck. All right, <laughs> so that's Black Eyed Susan. And now we turn to Preakness Day. Uh, that's uh, this upcoming Saturday, and that is the May, uh, the 18th of May at Pimlico. And we are going to start with the big one, the Preakness Stakes. And uh, for uh, Patreon members only, stay tuned because we are going to have the bonus race from Pimlico uh, we're going to talk about as well. First off, though, it's the big one. And, John, uh, just a little bit of a, of a note here because I don't think we mentioned this yet. So go ahead and update. I'm sure most of the viewers have heard this already, but just in case they haven't. Smooth is scratched. And it's a bad thing if you wanted to play against Smooth because all the odds will now be cut in half for the most part. So... I'm upset because I wanted I'm, to be, I'm not going to lie, John. I what? wanted to play against him. Yes, but I so do I. I don't hear you, Chad. You broke up. Chad? Okay. Go no. ahead, Chad. Can you hear Can you hear Yes. Hello? Yes, yes. yes. we hear you. Oh, I said, I'm not He's out. Because to me, I think he was the horse to beat. I wanted to play against him, but he's the best horse in the race. I understand, but the odds now, if you were betting an eight to one shot, yes, you could get seven yes, to But I'll take half the odds to okay. not have to be moved. Okay. All, All right. right. So no no Bob Baffert then in this race, I right? Don't think. But yep. Muth is fresh and Baffert dominates this race. Oh, actually, he does have a horse. Well, they, they left him another. If you love Stafford and you think he dominates the race, well, he left you another horse in the race. So. Okay. Yes. I All have right. To well. Imagination to play that. Okay. Yes, let's do that. Uh, let's start uh, with the one Mugatu. Mugatu has been on synthetic an awful lot over uh, his career, and taking a look at dirt, it's only happened a few times. Last time out, it was in the bluegrass, finished fifth, ran a fourteen. He was also number twenty-one in the Belmont in the uh, Kentucky Derby. He never got in, so this is, he gets in here, obviously. But I think he's a little slow. I don't like. Him. Okay, for people that want to use that as a crutch, as, as that's why they're going to play him in the Preakness because he almost got in the Derby. The only reason he almost got in the Derby is because he's the only other one that entered. He exactly. Would, he would have qualified on points. He was the forty-seventh on points. The horse hasn't hit the board in real race. And he's not good enough. No, and he's got no shot. Exactly. I don't think I don't think he can hit the board. Uncle he Uncle Heavy's also twenty to one. This is I read Ortiz Junior's ride. Uh, Uncle Heavy uh, ran a two excuse me, a twelve in the win at the Withers. That was in February. Came back in the wood, running a disappointing fifth and a fourteen on the sheet line. He did have trouble in his last race, so you could actually read it as the 12 two starts back, and then he had some trouble. One thing you know, the 12 was run on a wet track, so he certainly doesn't mind the track being sloppy. You know, he has somewhat, uh, he has a small shot to hit the board at best. Look, he's my he's my long shot play here. One, I know he's going to get the distance, okay? He has no problem stretching out. He was very, very good when he won the Withers at a mile and thing. After the Withers, because the horse tested positive for her, he's not him, a different horse, he was sent to the farm. He wasn't allowed to go back to parks. It messed up his training. He was off for three weeks. And to to get ready for the next race, to get ready for the derby, nothing can go wrong. When that happens, it just changes everything. And I know Butchery tried to spin it and said, oh, well, he needed a friend. It, it's bullshit. Like, it, it's not what he wanted. And now he can train properly into the free. I like this source at a little bit of a price. The wood, everything went wrong. He wasn't prepared. He wasn't ready. And then the horse fell down right in front of him, which kind of stopped his leg run that he likes to touch. I think he's a plus two under I don't think he can win, but I think he can definitely finish second or third. Yeah, and the, and the bonus of the fact that he's got those two wins on off tracks. So that's definitely going to help. Okay, and you got a Red Ortiz Jr. for the first time. Okay, next up is Catching Freedom, 
And uh, this looks like a real good contender here because catching freedom sheet line is uh, pretty solid. Uh, going from a 15 to a 9. Matter of fact, ran back-to-back -back nines, winning the Louisiana Derby, finishing fourth in the Kentucky Derby. Pratt's on board for the third time as well, John. And you're getting 6-1, to one, which isn't too bad. You're getting 6-1 to one when Muth was in the race. Muth is no longer in the race. I don't like this horse here. He's never done anything wrong, but the, he did something wrong. He's coming back on two weeks now. He's one of the three horses in this race that ran in the Derby last time out. Catching Freedom, Mystic Dan, and Just Steel. I want to play against all those horses that are coming back on two weeks. I don't like them. The one thing I'll say is he, Brad Cox. He can win. He can win, but I don't like him. Hey, Brad Cox has run one time in the last five years, back in two weeks, on a greatest stake race, and the horse won it was Donnie Borden, the Lexington. That being said, I don't, I never like this horse. I don't love this horse. Um, I'm not sure this is Brad's decision so much as the owners want to run up. All right. I think Brad has not super fit. Too much with him. Not a race that was targeted. It's Okay, let's go to the five, Mystic Dan, Derby winner, coming off a nine in that race, John. So this, uh, if you look at his last uh, five races, he's basically been improving from a 22 to a nine. Last three races are a 10, 10, and a nine. Yeah, well, he won the Derby last time out with an unbelievable ride and everything else that goes with it. But this is the first time that he's coming back close since last year. When he ran the 12 followed by the 22. He's going to be an underlay. He's going to be a short price. You're not going to get anywhere near the 18 to 1 that he was in the Derby. And for that reason, I, I know he's going backwards. He's not going forward. So when I have a short price horse that I know is going to regress, why would I want to play him? I don't like him. If it's a sloppy track, you have to use him. He loves the slop. Okay. The interesting thing to me, and John, you tell me about this. He seems to be a horse that loves the ramp. The two wins that were just dynamic, the Derby and the, the Southwest in Arkansas, he made this huge move up the fence. Some horses like to be outside. Yeah. Some horses like to be inside. If I'm riding this race and riding any other horse not named Mystic Dan, I'm not letting this horse up the inside. And if he doesn't come up the inside, we'll see how good he is. He's the Derby winner. It was a great ride from Brian. It was well prepared by Kenny McBee. But I think this horse wants to be on the rail. And in post five, I don't know that he's going to get over if post every other jockey now. rides a smart race. It's post four now. The hitch problem is he's got Irod Ortiz in front of him, and he's not letting him get the wood. So. I would think so. Six sees the gray. This is back. We got back to back D Wayne Lucas horses here with sees the gray and just deal. They're both 15 to one. Uh, sees the gray. The best uh, sheet line we have is a 13. He's run that three times this year, including in the Pat Day Mile win uh, in uh, May. And just deal's got Rosario on board uh, coming off uh, a nothing burger at the Derby. Before that, uh, was looking pretty good with a 13, 12, 13, and of course had the big seven at the Arkansas Derby finishing second. Which one of these two long shots from D. Wayne Lucas do you prefer, John? If I had to pick one, it would probably be, um, probably be, I don't like either one of them. They both ran on Derby Day. <laughs> Seize the Gray ran on Derby Day in the Pat Mile, the race, a couple of races before the Derby, and Just Steele ran in the Derby. So, again, they're back on two weeks. I don't like either one of them. If I had to pick one, it would probably be Seize the Great. By the I'm, way, Just I'm Steel's making... getting also a rider switch. He got rid of his uh, of uh, Smusen and he's putting Joel Rosario on. So, I don't know. Well, two things. One, I'll make a, a, a wager right now, John. Seize the Great will go off at 10 to 1 or less. Whoa. Yeah, it's okay. my race. Owned horse. By I know 4, why. Seven hundred twenty-eight people for right. my race horse. <laughs> right. Why? 
because my racehorse owns this horse, and that <laughs> they sell micro shares. You could buy a, you could be a horse owner, Greg, for like twenty dollars. You get like one hair on the horse's head. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's what you get for the twenty dollars, and everybody bets two dollars. So there's literally <laughs> thousands of people involved with this horse because they all and have they tell friends. their friends and they tell their friends. Their exactly. friends. Exactly. So anyway, I don't like the horse, but I just I would I do want to watch the odds. Here's the thing on Just Neil here. It was an awful ride to the Derby. It was, like he was too was close. What was he doing up there? It was way too. He was what? Yeah, I right. agree. So if you want the if you want the horse to come from behind, who's the first jockey you're going to call? Rosario. So there you go. Well, I yeah. think this horse is 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 a must use. He's won this race before. He, this is not necessarily Oxbow like, but I just feel like this horse. I'm tossing out the last race. I have no idea what he was doing. He it looked like he was, it was trying to help out his dad. It didn't look like he was trying to win the race. Well, just, he could I, have been riding shotgun for his dad. He was outside of him. I thought he was going to have to, like, roll a derby, and someone's going to come alongside, and he'd make a right. <laughs> but to me, I, th I think Rosario is the right jockey for this horse. He's going to the Hall of Fame this year, and he's got a shot to hit the board. By the way, he's riding very well now. The last couple of weeks, he's really been on, been on top of his game. Greg, you asked me who I like better. Chad talked me into just steal. He's right. I'm wrong. Forget he's the great. All right. Well, hey, he's got the better sheet numbers. So yeah. Uh, the next two are good contenders, especially Tuscan Gold, an eight to one shot with Gaffleone on board. This is a Chad Brown trained horse here, and uh, Tuscan Gold. Uh, we talked about him possibly. What did he back out of the Peter Pan last week? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the, I mean, I think that's a really good move. He gets an extra week off. He ran an eight, and that's important because he ran an eight, which was a six-point new top. So that extra week will help uh, when he ran third in the Louisiana Derby. Um, so anyway, yeah, I mean, eight to one, Gaff Leone, an eight last time out, Tuscan Gold. What do you think about the eight, John? This is my top selection. I, lo I love this horse at eight to one. Unfortunately, I'm probably going to get seven to two or four to one now, but I like this horse. And uh, Gaffleone's going to win this race for Chad Brown. I'm with I'm with John. That's my top pick as well. I think he's it was smart. You know, I don't think he, he, I guess he could have maybe backdoored with the Derby uh, once the other horse got in the race. But passing on the Peter Pan, pointing for the Preakness, a race that Chad Brown's won twice. It's a small field. The horse only run three times. He needs the experience. So. For me, this is a horse who's just getting better and better. Comes out of a good race at Fairgrounds, the same distance. And he's and fresh. He's a logical, fresh horse. I, I think he's the horse to beat. The, and then the nine is Imagination, a six to one shot, coming off a 10 in the Santa Anita Derby, ran second in that race. Uh, the, the sheet numbers have been really consistent and very good. I never had a bad race, ranging from a 13 to an 8. Ran an 8 in that race in February at Santa Anita, John. So that's the thing that really sticks out for Bob Baffert's imagination. This is a good horse. The problem with this horse is he really has hang in him because he had no excuse to lose the last race. And the race three starts back. I bet him that day, and he had no excuse really to lose that race either. It looks I swear, he waits on horses, Chad. Watch the replays. He waits on horses. Again. No, I, I agree with oh, you. Oh, okay. There is nothing wrong with this horse at all, except, I'm, you know, I just I have a bad taste about this horse. But that's it. He's fine. I'm using him for sure. But I'm uh, my top selection is the eight. Look, no, I agree with everything you said, John. He's a must-use in all your numbers, uh, but he's tough to trust on top. All right, so we all are going with the eight, Tuscan Gold. So now uh, let's try to make some money with the exactors. So, John? Eight with 279, Uncle Heavy, Just Steel, and Imagination under the eight. You could flip it around a little bit if you want, but th that's the numbers I like. Eight with 279. John, it's been a while since we said this, but we're in a complete agreement. Oh, my God, that's great news. <laughs> just absolutely completed it. Same, uh, same winner, same pick, same everything. Okay. Well, even Great. if I was going to uh, say the same thing, there's no way I would at this point. I'm not going to do that. I wouldn't do that to <laughs> Thanks us. Thanks for your confidence in us. No, it'd be, I'd be, I'd be putting a big whammo on us. To, uh, I'd be putting a big whammo on you guys. So I'm not going to do that. But anyway, um, yeah, the two 
Uh, definitely, I'll put the two in, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll end the five. I'm going to do it with the two and the five. We're oh. using Mystic Dan. You're hoping for that triple crown winner. No, Not I just, uh, I don't know. I could see Mystic Dan actually giving it a good try and finishing second. So okay. let's, just, let's just use this as an example, just for one second. And because I don't think he's going to win the Preakness, so it's going to be a moot conversation. If he wins the Preakness and he goes to the Belmont Stakes at Saratoga, where the distances change to a mile and a quarter, and he wins the Belmont Stakes, is it a true triple crown or no. is there an asterisk? There's an asterisk. Why did they okay. so why did they change the distance? Because they, they can't the run a mile they can't and a half. Race. Oh, okay. That's that's pretty bad. They're not running at Belmont Park this that's year. That's a major asterisk. It's closed for renovation. That's not so. even a small asterisk. That's a major asterisk. It's that's asterisk. like winning the World Series if you're a Dodger fan in the COVID year. Sorry, yeah. don't oh, count. No, no it's, it, it, it's, it's like winning the World Series. Where was it? Didn't they have one World Series where there was an earthquake and they couldn't play at their home? Yeah, the stadium? Giants. The Giants. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's, I mean, you're playing at a different location, different fences. But COVID was really bad. They stayed in one stadium for seven games. It was stupid. Yeah, shit. and they, they played half the games. They played like 80 yeah. games. <laughs> it's just stupid. That's, that's All not right. baseball. That's All right. It. So that's uh, the Preakness now for our Patreon. And look, if you, if you become a Patreon member and we're still, uh, you know, still going to be using Patreon for a while until we hit that thousand subscriber mark. So for pay Oh, speaking of Patreon members, we have a new one, Ruben Jimenez. So welcome Ruben Jimenez. And he actually has a message. Thanks, Greg. After I you know sent him the welcome note, I'm a big time horse enthusiast and have been a listener for a while. I finally decided to subscribe at eh, subscribe and hear analysis on other races not offered for free. Your analysis, I don't know why he's mentioning me, but he says your analysis is not only insightful, but sometimes quite funny. Yes, that's me. I love the chemistry between yourself, John, and Chad. Keep up the great work, Greg. So that's a nice note from Ruben. So, Thank you, Ruben. All right. Um, also, just some quick uh, messages in, uh, from uh, YouTube last week. Pick the pros and ponies said, great job with the $600,000 New York bread hard spun. Was that for you, Chad? That was a blow blow to yes. chat. It's a stupid comment. And I'll say it again. It's a stupid comment. They didn't watch what happened in the race. And obviously, they don't know what they're looking at. Other than that, we can move on. Look, I think the horse is going to be just fine. You so know, do I. I. When you when you have a horse with an expensive price tag, they're assumed that they're going to win first time out. And sometimes it takes the horses a few races. Especially at a mile first out, so not an easy thing. I to mean, do. Victor, Victor, listen, the horse is about 17 and a half hands tall. And last time I checked, Victor Wimbiamba won rookie of the year, and they had 14 wins on the year. So, <laughs> Robert Ruiz, great show. Thanks. Money invested sometimes breeds lack of confidence. Hot Rod Lincoln's song came to mind when you guys were describing the Derby. Okay. Did you get that? I didn't. I, I didn't. I don't get a lot of these, so that's I don't know if they're <laughs> horse racing anecdotes, but Team Bitcoin. I wouldn't count out the number one. Ho oh, this is the Peter Pan. Okay, we don't have to get into that. Um, let's see, Andy McVeigh. Uh, thank you. Only podcast I've heard that has noted MD knocking TP out. Thank you. And that, I guess, MD. was the reference uh, with the Derby finish. Oh, knocking Pletcher out. Who's ND? Oh, no, no, Mystic Dan knocking out Jack Phantom. Oh, oh, okay. So that was Chad's doing. There you go. Only podcast that noted it. Uh, Carl E. The inconsistency in steward calls is incredibly frustrating to most everyday players. An inquiry should have been put in this case. The fact it wasn't lends to the theory stewards are governed by more than what we see. They seem to be above it all in explaining themselves on their decisions. Also, I think Sierra Leone should have been DQ to third. Top of stretch, knocked forever young off stride. Kudos to the Japanese contingent on being courteous. Nice to see some of that in racing. I agree with everything he said. There should have been a DQ. Even if they don't take a horse down, you could still call an inquiry. The public's watching. You have millions of people watching on the biggest day, the biggest race of the year. Everyone saw something happen. 
If that was a Thursday afternoon at Churchill, that horse would have come down, but it wasn't. Not for anything. The way the Derby's run, wouldn't there just be an inquiry every year? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, fine. But this was right in front <laughs> of everybody. This didn't happen on the back stretch. This happened in front of everybody. And right. it was a great finish. You had three noses on the wire. You're going to tell me what Sierra Leone did to Forever Young didn't cost them a nose? Are you kidding me? Roshan Kuriakosi. Horse racing in America is a joke. Stupid <laughs> rules America has. He's right. <laughs> That's Roshan. Uh, let's see. Dan Rook. What was total feet traveled by Sierra Leone? I haven't seen Trackus data yet. He had to travel farthest. I had him on top of a try with 311 second and third. Tough photo. Actually, yeah, I, I think Forever Young yeah. traveled the furthest. Young, Chad, was tra was Sierra, was uh, Forever Young wider than him or no? Well, you, you know, Sierra Leone saved a lot of ground going into the first turn. Uh, we do have right. to get this. I, I, I'm going to get this information for next week's show. I, for sure, I think Sierra Leone, he went wide, but it, it, he kind of saved ground until the turn. It by the way, to look at. I, I don't know that he had the right. By the way, group. both Sierra Leone and Forever Young ran faster sheet numbers than Domestic Dan. One well, ran yeah, a seven, I mean, look, one ran a six. Domestic Dan was, was was hugging the rail. He literally yeah, he the never rail. left the wood. He never left the wood. Right, exactly. All right, and then the last one is from Bill Kelly. Why are vets not part of the penalty phase of the discussion? No trainer actually prescribes medication. No, that's oh, the, listen, he's 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 hundred percent right. He Look, is right. This is something this is a, a HISA issue and it's a greater issue in the industry and, and I couldn't agree more. Your vet is a product of you. And as as much as there's the trainer responsibility rule, look, sometimes the trainer tests positive and they're not even in the state. They don't even know, you know, what happened? an accident yeah. happened. It, well, from the assistant or the groom or whatever, and the trainer gets suspended, the vet's part of the team. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, I noticed, and this, this is not from the YouTube comment section. This is from the texting comment section between the three of us. Uh, John uh, mentioned that Muth scratch from the Preakness spiked a fever shipping to, uh, the Maryland. And then Chad Summers sarcastically said, sure he did. Uh, and that started a little bit of a back and forth. Uh, I, I don't believe he spiked the fever. That, that's just an easy way out for the trainer. I don't believe he spiked the fever either. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Okay. No, I think oh. he, he might have spiked the fever. But yeah, this is, okay. listen, this is what happens when you ship on top of a race. Right. If you shipped over there two weeks ago, he was never running in the Derby. He was never running in the Derby. Right. So why didn't they? That's a great point, Chad. You, why didn't they? If you ship over and you get sick, yeah. then you got a time to get over it. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, bye, everybody at YouTube. We're heading to our final bonus race for Patreon members only.